Damn. What's up, everybody? Uh, I am going live again. Want to talk to you, hang out with you, uh, show you some new hats that we got, just in case you're looking for some early Christmas presents for yourselves or for anybody else. And I'm going to tell you about our camps. Uh, what's going on with our camps? We still have a few spots left available for only open men's level for the January 2nd camp. So uh, if you're planning on coming to a camp or you've been a little bit hesitant because you think you're a high level player, well, we have one court for you. So open men's level, we still have a couple of spots for you. Um, December 26th and January 2nd are sold out except for our wait list. And then April 3rd, uh, camp is coming up and we are releasing that in 12 days. We're releasing booking for that. So today I just want to be here, hang out with you, uh, check in with the chat. And if you guys have any questions um, or there's anything you want to talk about, I am going to be here. While I'm here, I might as well show you the hats. They are about $30, not about, they are $30 a piece. Uh, first one's right here. I know my hair is not done, but we'll be fine. Uh, here is our flex fit snapback. It is my personal favorite. If you like it, it's a bit of a beach snapback. Uh, go ahead and DM me or get into the comments quick. We only have like 12 of each one. Uh, I'll show you the rest if you want to see them, but I've got a whole box of them down here. And uh, just in case you want to check out the visors or the snapbacks, uh, I will show you whichever ones you want to see. So if anyone wants to jump into the comments and let me know, go ahead and I'll show you the whole lineup of hats. If not, I will start talking about some just kind of basic serve receive stuff uh, if you guys want to hear that. And then I'm just opening here for a little ask me anything um any volleyball questions and i'm gonna share some kind of life updates and hear what you guys want to say uh so in, in instagram world in the realm of show serves are foot serves legal or no trent foot serves are not legal in any legitimate league <laughs> uh, they might be in your local everything but foot serves are not legal uh, you do have to serve with one hand one arm what's up Pierre? how you doing buddy merry christmas uh down in facebook land mark i'd love to get the flex fits again since i've got 50 50. um all right oh are you talking about uh in-person classes zane zane if you're talking about in-person classes in hermosa joiner is a guy to go to so um i will relay that message i'm going to write it down for you and we'll see what we can talk about with him but uh zane how about getting us a spot in redondo man zane get in touch with joiner um we have our camps were awesome guys our camps were so sick. Uh, we ended up uh, sh struggling uh, to get bookings early on, and then a bunch of them poured in late. Uh, and we ended up with full camps, which was so great. Uh, the postcard in at St. Pete Beach treated us really well. They needed some work on their uh, cleaning, but uh, we had long meetings with them, and our partnership is just going to strengthen and get better and better. And we are going back there December 26th and January 2nd. So are there any open men's players out there? Uh, do you know of any open men's players? Because we have a court right now that we have eight players on that court. We're trying to get four more so that we have the option of having uh, two courts, two high-level competitive courts. So if you're an open player out there or you know any, January 2nd, there's going to be uh, a spot for you and you just got to get in touch with me <sighs> other than that those camps are sold out we did have a late cancellation and there are a couple of spots left still left right now because uh the wait list hasn't hasn't booked it but those are only open to the people on the wait list 
So we can't uh, can't open them up aside from that. Uh, being a colada, I uh, love that you're asking questions. What's the process for going pro? Process for going pro is grinding. Just making sure that you get your reps, that you're finding a good coach, uh, that you skip past all of the nonsense. It, it, and by nonsense, I mean all of the like heavy, hard mistakes that are going to cost you a few hundred points along the way. Um, so if you do want to go pro, depending on what country you're in, right? In the U.S., all you got to do is keep winning. That's it. You know, it, you have to get your reps in. You have to start hanging out with better players. You have to start hanging out with better coaches. But it, there's no one holding you back from winning. All you got to do is just keep winning tournaments, and then you sign up for a AVP qualifier, and that's it. Uh, once you make it through that qualifier, which seems to get tougher and tougher every year, um, especially on the women's side, then that's it. You're a pro. It might be different in your country. Um, if the, that process was a little crazy in your country, I want to hear about it. So go ahead in the comments. Let me know. Uh, volleyball videos. Any clinics coming up in Salt Lake City? Actually, volleyball videos. Um, I was planning on giving Corey a call in the next couple of days because I'm trying to get out there maybe in February to run a Salt Lake camp, um, Salt Lake City camp at the at the sandbar, which is a great facility. Everybody out there in Salt Lake City who gave me a home <laughs> for eight months, like, thank you. It was so, so, so awesome just getting to hang out there, live there, work with everybody. It was incredibly exhausting having to fly out every weekend and fly back every week to be with my now wife, but it paid off because she married me. Um, and we got married, uh, I guess six or seven weeks ago, October 15th. So if you guys want to send wedding presents, <laughs> more than open. Um, and if you want to send some, uh, if you want to get some Christmas presents, we got some pretty sweet hats. So let me know. Again, same thing in the comments. Uh, I put them on my Instagram stories. So if you want to check out our selection of hats, and it's a tiny box that we have here. I can move it with my hand. So we don't have a lot of each style, but I've also never done like a one day, let me uh, sell all the hats and see if we can uh, get rid of a, a certain style, not get rid of, but give out, let people buy a certain style. So if you want to check out the hats, I posted them on my uh, Mark Berg Beach Volleyball Facebook stories and my Instagram stories. Paul. Experiencing some serve receive mistakes. And why are we often getting the ball off the side of the inside or outside nine foot forearm? Oh, that's a, a tough question. End of the wrist or the hand, just curious. So, Paul, I think what you're asking is like in serve receive, why do we miss? You know, why are we having trouble targeting? Number one, uh, I have seen players who, once getting their vision checked and getting different contact lenses and different glasses, they're able to pass better because you're targeting it better. But I'll, maybe I'll talk about float serves for a second because of the way that they wiggle. One of the things that I always tried to do early on, um, which was a mistake, was I tried to be exactly perfect and I would pull away from the ball until I felt like there was an opportune moment to pass it, but that, that moment never came by. It's like trying to get as close as you can to a fly before smacking it, instead of just taking a big swath of air and knocking it out. When you are passing and you're seeing float serves, if you can flow through it, and even though it might not be perfect, if it bounces off one arm or the middle of both arms, so long as your platform is steady, strong, stiff, then you're going to be able to get a good pass. But it's when you don't quite trust it. When you don't trust your platform, you don't trust that it's going to be accurate, that you then get a shank. So stare at the bottom middle of the ball when you're receiving float serves. Um, if you're taking float serves, usually outside of the body is best. You're going to have more versatility with your platform, and your platform is going to move a little bit faster than your feet. So take those float serves outside your midline. And then just finish forward 
don't let yourself get shaky and pull away from that ball. All right. Um, got another question here from YouTube. Could you express your opinion about the new FIVB tournament format? Somebody update me. Uh, I haven't seen the articles. Uh, I've been focused on my camps, but if there's a new FIVB tournament format, Vladimir, I would love to express my opinions on them. So uh, let me know and just give me an explanation of what they are. Bini Colada from the United States, currently in California for a month or two. Any specific cities and areas in California where I can get great touches and games? 100%. Come to Hermosa Beach. Hermosa Beach is the city to go to uh, if you want to get good volleyball reps, good competition, and uh, great coaches. There's so many great coaches out there. And if you do want to get some private coaching, hit us up at betteratbeach.com and we will steer you the right way. Um, but in California, Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach, Huntington Beach to the south, and then you've got a good crop of guys in Laguna and some kind of smaller groups in Santa Barbara and San Diego, but those are just the great cities to go to. Um, also San Francisco volleyball, uh, they've got a great Facebook group. If you guys are up in San Francisco, I've got a couple friends who are doing great things out there. They're running classes every weekend and uh being really good to their people so um, those are all the cities that you can get to in california and i'm sure there's more and if anybody wants a shout out on the chat where they're running volleyball classes or where they're trying to get games let me know uh and being colada if you are looking for games you can post in volley chat on our facebook group um or just dm me and let me know like what level you are and I'll set you up with the, the right guys or the right classes or the right training, whatever you need. Frederick from Chicago, I want to say quite a bit of FIVB. Uh, would you know why I almost see three or four box called there? That's pretty interesting, Frederick. Um, I think, uh, I think I see a lot of four blocks, uh, even more than we used to. So here's one thing that you can, I mean, that's, that's observation also, whatever you see more of, you'll notice more of, but you might see four blocks happening with just a blocker. That happens sometimes where you don't need your defender sprinting around behind you. You leave them in that diagonal and you let your blocker take up and do that work. So there are, are three and four blocks that you can run just with your defender so that your blocker stays stable. You can run a three or four block just with your blocker so your defender stays stable. Sometimes it, that works better because one or the other player on defense gives that away. And we talk about that. We actually talked to, had a long conversation about that in our camps uh, this, this weekend because sometimes you have somebody who's just a terrible faker or they always leave too early or something about them shows or gives away to a certain type of hitter. So you can do a three or four block with one person and not the other. Oh, if, and if you're talking about like what three or four signs that they show, they might just be showing different signs. Um, all different teams have all different signs. So um, you, you don't necessarily have to pay attention to just three or four on their fingers. Um, are you going to put a team together to compete in the next McKibben's four-man journey? That would be sick. And if we did, I would want to do it with my East Coast buddies, uh, East Coast Mafia. I would be with Shane Donahue, Eric Lucas, Brandon Joyner, Hudson Bates, uh, Chris Frazier. I would love to throw in a New York team. I mean, Shane Donahue's uh, been winning in New Jersey for uh, 10 years. I, I don't know when the last time he lost a jersey tournament is. If you can uh, share that, if you can send when the last tournament Shane Donahue didn't win in New Jersey is, I'm going to give you a high five. <laughs> um, are you guys watching those videos, the McKibben videos? I haven't, I know, I know, I know, but I haven't seen any yet. And I'm actually looking forward to just like binge watching them because they're doing such a sick job um and they're getting big partnerships so i'm actually really stoked for them 
Um, new pair-ups. We're asking if there are any new pairs happening uh, in the beach world, in the teammates. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I haven't been paying attention really at all. Uh, I was focused really hard on getting married. That took a lot of my focus. and I'm glad I did uh, paid attention to only family, only friends, and of course, 100% uh, my wife. So I'm stoked with that. We, uh, we went to our wedding like 10 days early. We had our whole family together for a week in this beautiful place in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And then afterwards, we've just been doing uh, road trips, uh, looking at some real estate in different places in Tennessee and in Florida. And uh, then it, it went straight into the camps. So it went from hardcore wedding season to honeymoon and enjoying being married and then straight into camps. And now I'm finally just kind of recollecting uh, my life. But I'm glad that I've taken the time that I have. And now I get back to doing kind of normal stuff and paying a little bit more attention to you guys. So I apologize. I've been kind of exited from social media. Um, but I'm back. We're here. Gabe Cleveland. Would you do a holiday beach gift guide? Gabe, what do you mean? Uh, do you mean like kind of top 10 presents that I, I would talk about for beach volleyball players? Because um, if you check out, I will post a link and hopefully it shows up for everybody. But we have some shirts, we have some hats available for Better at Beach. So if you want to give the gift of volley, you let me know and I'll steer you that way. Um, I'm going to try to pull up that link right now in the background. Hang on a second. Um, better at beach, beach spring. There we go. All right. We've got a couple of designs up here right now. I'm posting it in the chat. Ah, sand socks, the right glasses. Um, I know what you're saying in terms of what presents to get some people. So we've got a couple of blogs on Better at Beach. Give me a second. I'm going to pull up the exact link. And if you go to betteratbeach.com forward slash blog, and you just in the search bar put gifts, I've actually included a lot of uh, links to things that volleyball players make and do. Oh, no. Uh, maybe I lied. Gifts, presents, ideas. I'm looking at it in the background. If anybody can find the blog that I wrote uh, a little while ago, then just let me know. But I'm trying to find it here in the background. This is why I need like a Jamie. <laughs> I need a Joe Rogan Jamie uh, on my team. I am trying to find our gift guide on betteratbeach.com where we actually show um, a bunch of all of the best players or player made gifts, things that you can buy like McKibben t-shirts, um, presents, just presents might be them. Hmm. Okay. Can't find it right now, but I will find it and I will post it to volley chat. So I'll look for that blog and I'll post it to volley chat. Um, if you want to check out my Amazon store, it's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash bitter at beach. So here it comes. I'm posting it into the chat. Uh, I've just assembled all of kind of necessary beach volleyball gear. So amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash bitter at beach. Uh, it, it's all gear that is completely and 100% relevant to beach volleyball. I've got a bunch of different ones, books, player essentials, vertical jump training, home gym. Um, and beach court essentials. So that might just quicken up your search. And if you um, do buy it from my store, I get like a little percentage of it. So that would help me out and, and keep us creating. Um, okay, so Vladimir gave me this. Oh no, Ramon, when can we expect there to be another camp at Salt Lake City? Oh, I just, uh, I'm hoping for again, February, or March, um, and also looking to do another one with Grand Sands in Ohio. So if you guys can think of any other cities that we should run in or any other facilities that we should go to, I would love to hear about them. 
let me know. Any outdoor lighting systems for the courts? So UCDVB, um, there is a company right now that uh, is doing portable uh, pie lumen lighting specifically for people who like, want to play sports outside and beach volleyball. He's talking to Joe, um, who's our customer success manager um, and volleyball coach. And she is trying to work out something with them with an affiliate program. So I don't, I, I can't remember what it is right now. And like I said, if, if I had a, a, a Jamie, somebody looking things up in the background, uh, then I could get that. But uh, I will try to post that. And of course, we'll make big announcements of it about it as soon as we can. But there is a company that's doing portable outdoor lighting systems with big batteries and super bright lights. So, um, yeah. Noah, currently going to Florida State, and I'm trying for the FSU Beach Club. Congrats, man. That's cool. Uh, I played club volleyball my first two years uh, at University of Delaware. So, uh, club the club scene is fun but there definitely was not club beach volleyball while i was in college so cool that you're starting that and uh seen a lot of improvement with setting and receiving but struggling with my spiking specifically getting that snapping motion when i actually jump and getting my elbow back any tips to help me improve that uh so no first things first if you've ever looked at our website um betteratbeach.com we have two courses two programs that take you through exactly that one of them is uh side out and win tournaments the attacking master class that talks about everything from what type of swing you want to use against a certain defense to how you space yourself to where you need to put yourself in transition and uh in system plays uh, we talk about the approach and the design of that we also have fix your arm swing in 21 days and in that program, uh, we fix your arm swing in 21 days. We take you through exactly what you're talking about, getting your elbow back, um, having snap through the ball. I wouldn't necessarily worry about snapping like on top of the ball. That is very dependent on height. And I don't know how high you jump. I don't know how tall you are. Uh, but that snap should come from this elbow back position until the top. Most people try to bring the ball down and they end up netting, they end up getting blocked. So I would say just make sure that you are staying high. And uh, in that program, so in our coaching program, all of our courses are included and you have two live meetings with our coaches every week, Noah. So you would go, you would do the drills from the course, film them, post them to our private Facebook group, and then at the next meeting, well, when you post it and at the next meeting, our coaches go through that swing, go through that approach, go through your defense with you with film so that you can make those corrections. So um, that's at betteratbeach.com forward slash coaching. Take a look. Uh, it gives you a lot more information, but I'll write it in here as well, betteratbeach.com forward slash coaching. And we would love to have you as part of our coaching program uh, so that we can start working on that. But yeah, you do the drills and the exercises, you video them, you post them to a private Facebook group. Then when you post them to a private Facebook group, we coach you through comments on the Facebook group and in the two meetings that we have every week. One of those meetings just finished up 40 minutes ago. Um, so highly recommend it if you are looking for some training. Go ahead and do it. Looking for any other questions down here in Instagram land. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Not too many. Cool. What are the questions you guys have? I don't have too much longer. I'm going to head out, but I would love to hear uh, anything that you guys want to know or anything that you are thinking of in your world. No problem, Noah. Glad I could help, and I hope we can help a lot more. Uh, there's also, hey, uh, Noah, there's also, if you go to betterbeach.com, just the blog section and you just type in arm swing in the search bar, 
you're going to find a lot of our blogs there and a lot of our videos there. Um, you can also search spike and attack in that search bar at betterbeach.com forward slash blog, and you'll find a lot of stuff there. So, um, and reach out and DM me if you have any other questions and do that to my personal uh, Instagram. That's probably the best place to reach me, uh, Mark Burick on my Instagram. Here's what I'm thinking of doing, guys, and let me know if you think it's a good idea. I am thinking of, well, we're going to start a little kind of kind of podcast, kind of like regular guest episoding for Better at Beach, um, and it'll be called Get Better at Beach Volleyball. And, but <clears throat> aside from that, we're going to have we're going to have guests, we're going to have conversations about skills, and we're going to record it on YouTube, and at the same time, we're going to uh, hopefully create it into a podcast. So take the audio and get a little podcast channel. But I'm looking at kind of a next endeavor as well. And what I'm thinking about is starting a podcast. And I don't want to release the name of it. Okay, I'll release the name of it. I already got all the accounts and everything. Uh, it's called Entrepreneur Athlete. And I want to talk to people sports people, athletes who have turned their sport and their athletic life into a business for themselves, into a living for themselves, not necessarily just through playing, not just pro athletes, but more like the pro athletes who have made themselves or something into a business. Um, I really want to have those conversations specifically with those people. I think that there are a lot of athletes out there like myself who just you want to stay around your sport or you want to stay around sports, period. And you find a way to make a living of it during pro career or post pro career. And I think I can have conversations with really cool guests and people that I want to talk to, people who are athletic and entrepreneurial minded. Um, let me know if you guys think you would listen. Would you guys listen to that? Uh, Entrepreneur Athlete, a podcast that focuses on athletes who are turning their sport or sports into a business, into a, a living for themselves. I think, uh, I think that's my next endeavor. I don't see a ton of excitement out there or any comments on it, but we'll see what it, what, uh, it comes into. I'm putting it out into the universe so that maybe, uh, not maybe it'll happen because I want to have those conversations. And I don't, I don't think I even, I see no like avenue right now for making money on it, maybe sponsorships or whatever. Um, or maybe I end up being a business coach someday. Uh, I do like coaching in all facets. But when I think about the conversations that I would have, like I want to learn from people. And I think it would just be cool to do that through conversation. And I like talking to people one on one. Those are some of my favorite uh conversations, a nice little glass of whiskey and a one-on-one -on -one talk. So, um, you know, uh, I'm hoping to do it and let me know if, let me know what kind of guests you would want in that world. So if you guys want to hear my podcast that doesn't exist yet, Entrepreneur Athlete, uh, what guest, what athlete that has turned himself or his sport or herself or her sport into a business or a living for themselves. So an athlete who became an entrepreneur, what guest do you think belongs on that podcast? Corey, you would listen. Thanks, man. Awesome. Raul, you'd listen. Volleyball videos. I wish I knew your name. Cool. <laughs> uh, it would be pretty interesting. It's, you're right, Noah, with NCAA athletes. I might have an entire crop of NCAA athletes listening because they have to now because you have to be a, apparently a business person just to play sports in college, which is nuts. Thanks, Eric. Ooh, Chris Hanneman. I would for sure get him. And of course, like Al Hanneman, his brother. That would be fun. Uh, I, th I think it would be cool. And I'm going to do it. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I guess just a microphone and a camera uh, and figure it out. Yeah, um, I don't, UCDVB, I'm going to be honest with you, like social media 
and the sponsorships that you see that beach volleyball players have, the very large majority of beach volleyball players that you see who have sponsorships and partnerships are getting so much less out of those sponsorships than they could if they dedicated themselves to their own time to building their own thing. Because as a, as a, somebody who's selling themselves on Instagram, first of all, the margins, unless you're like uh, helping somebody sell a house or some very expensive piece of equipment, the margins aren't there. Like you're getting what, $4 for a freaking, uh, every time you sell a tub of protein and how many people are buying protein from you? They just want to watch you play volleyball. People are making huge, huge mistakes when they dedicate so much time to their sponsorships and partnerships on Instagram. The people who I see who are really doing it well are the kids. Like those guys are nailing it because they have a big, big platform. They didn't search little ones, little companies. Um, you know, companies, business owners, they want marketing, of course, and they think that certain things will work and they think that a certain person's voice is going to help them. But I'm going to be honest, those partnerships and sponsorships that you see when beach volleyball players are posting, like, here's my code, blah, 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 you know, Jacob, uh, 2020, uh, as your coupon code, like, nope, the only way to do that financially uh, successfully is to say, you are going to pay me before I post those little stupid partnerships. They don't work. And for any young volleyball player out there who's searching free shorts and free, uh, protein and, and free gym, whatever, the amount of work that you put in just to get those is not going to be worth the time that you give up where you could, uh, be, building something of your own, building your own platform. So that's my recommendation to all the young players out there. Um, and, and yes, uh, Phil Dauhauser does have a financially strong mindset. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, every time we've been in the player tent together, me and Phil, we talk only and nonstop about real estate. Um, he was smart early on. I think he put some of his money into some properties. He doesn't have a ton, but uh, he was very realistic with the money that, that volleyball could bring. And he's very interested, uh, in, in real estate. And I think he's going to continue to be absolutely fine. But yeah, I think Phil's a, a smart money guy. Mm -hmm. All right. We, we got another volleyball question here. What kind of workouts do you do in the gym to help with volleyball? So here's what I'm going to do for you. Shannon, if you go and I'll, I'm going to give you an entire list, okay? Because one, two, three, four, five, fitness and injury prevention. If you go to betterbeach.com forward slash blogs, just uh, forward slash blog, and then you click on fitness and injury prevention. That's every free video and, and uh, free video and blog we've ever written on fitness and injury prevention. Uh, if you're trying to get better, first of all, fix all of your imbalances. And I know that that's, that is a 10 hour conversation on its own but you need to fix your imbalances. You need to balance yourself. You need to learn how to lift heavy, learn how to lift heavy, and then you need to lift heavy. You need to learn how to lift fast and heavy. So if you're doing things for your legs at like 12 and 15 reps, or you're going for one mile runs or jogs, get rid of it, get rid of it quick and learn how to be explosive with as much power, which means maximum strength um, and maximum speed. And there are two ways to do that. One of them is you take a very light weight and you move it as fast as you can. And the other way is you take an extremely heavy weight. And again, even though it's going to be moving slower, you should mentally uh, move it as fast as you possibly can. Okay. If you want a workout program for vertical leap, I will right now 
post it into the chat. I know this isn't going on Instagram, but it is going to YouTube and Facebook. Okay. It's betteratbeach.com forward slash 60 day max vertical jump. Betteratbeach.com forward slash 60 day max vertical jump. So if you want a 60 day program, what, what it is, is uh, I take you through it. So week one, well, technically week zero, we go through just kind of a rebalancing. I stretch you out. I give you some mobility exercises and we start waking up your muscles. Uh, there's also testing. And as you go through it, it's a 10 week program. As you go through it, I slowly increase uh, the fitness uh, volume because you're going to start out with mobility and a little bit of agility. Uh, you're going to be fixing imbalances for the first couple of weeks. Then I move you into a very short hypertrophy stage just to introduce it. But we get off of that quickly because max strength and speed is where it's at. And so for the last seven weeks of the program, you're working on max strength and max speed. And in that program, it's all of the videos, all of the workouts. You will actually be working out with me in that video. So I'm doing the workout with you. I'm doing the rest with you. I'm giving your keys as you're doing it. Uh, you would need a phone uh, or your computer with you while you're working out. Uh, a lot of people just like leave their headphones uh, in and they use their, their phone with it. But you can also, if you leave your phone just like running on the side of a, of a crowded gym, you would see me when I start and stop my rest period. And so then you would work that out with me. So it's a 60 day vertical jump plan. It's very, very, very specific to beach volleyball players. So I very much recommend that program. It took me a long time to build and it took me an entire career uh, and education of knowing what to do. So I have every answer there. Just go to betterbeach.com forward slash 60 day max vertical jump. It's also on the homepage. You can click right to it. Um, so make sure you're lifting heavy, make sure you're lifting fast. Uh, take care of your shoulders and don't let any imbalances go, but uh, long breaks and short reps, short, heavy reps. Okay. Hope that answers in a very fast way. Now, more questions from there. Uh, would you undergo leg lengthening surgery if you're too short for volleyball? Would you go, <laughs> I, uh, no, I would not undergo leg lengthening surgery if I were too short for volleyball. I think that's like a steroids question. Like, would you do roids? Like, that's, I think that's gotta be legal if you get leg enhancement surgery. Uh, no, I would find out what tools I need to become good, great, competitive and I would work on those tools. Everybody's a different size. Everybody's a different strength. Everybody's got different things in their body. So your job is to figure out what strengths and weaknesses you have, learn how to protect your weaknesses, and then learn how to accentuate your strengths. Everybody's like, oh man, if I were three inches taller, I would blah, blah, blah. And that's bullshit. That's incorrect. Because if you were three inches taller, you would have an entirely different set of skills. Because your entire environment, your entire universe would have been different. You wouldn't be the same person if you were three inches taller. So people need to stop making that excuse. It's garbage. You, you, here are your skills. Here's the skill set that God or the universe or whatever gave you, right? Now it's your turn to learn how to use it. Like this is, this is the hand that you were dealt. So how do you play it? Some people can win a poker hand with crap cards, right? Turns out they were great cards because it made you do certain moves during that hand and in order to win. So you got to figure that out first. But no, I would not do leg lengthening surgery uh, to play volleyball. Uh, <laughs> Noah LaPace, huh? I bet I could get him on the podcast. That would be sweet. Um, only seriously for the last five months, but seen a crazy amount of improvement. No, we'd love to have you in the coaching program, man. It would be cool for you to check it out. Um, that would be sweet. All right. Anything else? I know, uh, sorry, Instagram. I haven't been mentioning anybody in the comments, but Claire, good to hear from you. Good to hear from you, Claire. And yes, lifting heavy is where it's at. You know, 
I've seen a couple of your highlights uh, on the gram recently, and you're balling out. I think you and Dan are really balling out, Claire. Uh, croissant. Terrence, I'd like to have you on the podcast too. That would be sweet. And I am not small. My legs are thick as motherfuckers. <laughs> so um, that's it. Jason, I uh, see so you just joined. I was talking to the audience here and uh, I want to start that podcast. I want to start that entre entrepreneur athlete podcast and talk to athletes who have turned themselves into entrepreneurs so that we can talk about sport, people who are figuring out ways to either coach or just make cool products. I, I think it would be just, just be awesome uh, as a small business person, entrepreneur, and as an athlete to have those conversations. So that'd be sweet. I've been told I hit too hard and straight down. How can I become weaker? Uh, <laughs> Jason, I've been told I hit too hard and straight down 100% of the time. How can I become weaker? Uh, I tell you what, you can become weaker by uh, getting Anthony on your team. That will help you hit less straight down, and uh, it will definitely make you look weaker. And just let him know that I said that. Any ideas on when my podcast will start? How about next week? Like maybe I should set a deadline myself to call somebody, get on a microphone and do it and just start running. It's not going to be perfect. And I, trust me, I've learned Raul that if you wait for perfect circumstances or you wait to know to, to when you think you know how to do something, man, you fail. You never get started. 100% you never get started if you wait till you think you're perfect or you think you're good. So I'm going to keep following that in my life and I'm going to start a really sloppy podcast. Let's go with next week. How about before next Thursday? I'll get someone on. Maybe Brandon will be my first guest. I, I don't know. There's a lot of volleyball players who have turned themselves uh, entrepreneurial. So uh, I'm going to start posting in volley chat and see if I can get some guests to outreach. I mean, we're starting already with an audience of like 80,000. Uh, from my better at beach stuff. So maybe some people will come along, but that should be cool. All right. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Oh, guys, I, I, I haven't even shown you the hats yet. So people who are not on my Instagram, check it out. New crop of hats. And I'm trying to ship them all out today if people want to order them. But this is our flex fit, uh, better at beach hat. Really love that's that's my favorite by far. This is our dad hat that we just ordered. And we have less than 12 of each one. This is the loop, and this is like this nice little dad hat right here. Uh, if you want it, get to me on Instagram uh, at Mark Burrick. I'll show you the rest of the hat cropage. This is shockingly comfortable. This visor from FlexFit, it says Play Beach on it. Um, and it's so comfortable and it's got a loop Velcro, uh, and that's the first time we made a visor. Uh, I, my mom was begging me for four years. She's like, I'm Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to wear hats. Just get me a visor. And so mom, I got you. This is pretty cool. This is a, it's kind of like a wool. It says it's a Jersey cotton relax fit. Same thing. It's the loop, the loop back, um, and nice soft top. Uh, Brandon always yells at me to make sure that I get the dad hat style. I like the hats with the shape. This kind of almost looks like a Peaky Blinders hat. Um, but it's warm. I'll tell you that one. That one is warm. This here is for Eric Grabowski, who has been begging me to get exactly this style of hat with this stitching. Uh, the brown and the black here. It's a snapback. And surprisingly, all of these fit my head. But that is the Bitter Beach snapback hat same thing on instagram if you want to get them i'd like to give them all out today um it's 30 bucks a piece you just gotta venmo me your address if you are in the u.s you got this navy blue one with the white back same style dad hat fit this is actually a pretty nice one i really like this one this one's mine <laughs> okay um and then we have 
two more styles. One of them, uh, this is this is like my favorite type of style. This is this uh, flat brim. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but it's got this kind of jean material color uh, and the mesh back. I like I like the flat brims. I like the shape on top, kind of like skater look, or whatever. Um, but love this one. And finally, the last one. Where are you? There it is. Uh, this is our like dark gray or steel flat brim, flat bill, better at beach hat. If you guys want any of these, let me know. Just DM me uh, on Instagram. That'll be the easiest way so I can collect them all there and you can check through my stories and see, uh, click on which one you want and then send me that message. So, anywho, let's get back to a couple questions and I'll stay for like uh, five more minutes. Okay. Are there strategies? So Zachary Bay says, are there strategies for when the other team is targeting someone on serving? Yeah, there are a couple strategies. Um, if one, it depends if that, that person's just not siding out or if they're getting aced, if they're like passing poorly every time, uh, then you can 100% just pinch them, put them on a quarter of the court and the other partner can pass uh, three quarters of that court. That's simple. You can use a Kira eye formation. Uh, Karch Kira did it when he had a busted shoulder. They would line up like this in serve receive, and then as the toss came, they would just slide into their situation to like kind of give the server a little insecurity. Um, but if it's a side out issue, then you have the option of going out on two, uh, spreading the offense, like running a different style of set, running a back set. Uh, you got to get creative there. So if it's serve serve receive issue, pinch the court. Um, see if you can distract the server in some way by taking a step just as they're tossing and looking at you. Um, slow the game down or if you can make that server get frustrated, right? But show them different looks so that you start planting little like worms in their brain if so, if one person's getting picked on. All right. Hope that helps, Zach. Um, we go over serving strategies a lot in our ultimate defender course and uh, our pro coaching program if you're ever interested. Mm -hmm. Benjamin, I still haven't seen the fours tourney. Um, it looked sick. It looked like an awesome event. They're leaking of like their drip of videos is so smart and, and it's fun. You know, they didn't just like pack it all in and give it to everybody at once. Uh, they, those guys are going to be in Hollywood. Like for sure. The McKibbins are going to be Hollywood documentary guys. They're so talented. So, um, and, but I will eventually watch those fours matches. Mm -hmm. And got any shorts now that slunks are too cool? <laughs> oh, um, no smack talking slunks. They're they are cool. Uh, need another brand. Um, I do like slunk shorts. Uh, uh, other than slunks. I like, I really like Kamina. It, they used to be plastic. They're Kamina. I wear Dave Kamina's shorts all the time. If you go to betterbeach.com forward slash shop, uh, you will see my link to David's stuff. And then I get some, some tiny little percentage of it. Uh, but Kamina makes great, great, great shorts. Um, so Kamina is definitely my favorite. I do like slunks. Uh, and I will be wearing slunks at a lot of fun tournaments. I just want to wear them every day because like when I wear shorts, I want to be able to like walk into a bar or go to the, the beach and walk around the city. And I think slunks is a very beachy style, uh, which I, I really, I don't know. I like wearing them. I think they're comfortable. I think they're loud, but I just don't wear them like in airports or anything. And I like to have versatility uh, in my clothing choices. Hey, Sandra, how are you? Zachary, best time, best way, uh, Kamina, K-A-M-E-N-A, -E Dave Kamina. He's at every, he's at every great uh, beach volleyball tournament, every amateur event he goes to. Uh, that's the only company he has. He, pro he provides fun for his family. They travel literally 
in a camper around the country every summer and go to all the amateur tournaments and they're just good people. Uh, the best way to time your block is to make sure that the other person jumps first. Okay, Zach? Make sure you see them jump and then you jump. Do not, do not, do not jump at the same time. What up, Eric? Dude, you, you're probably like a mile away from me right now. <laughs> Let's hang out. All right, guys, that is all the time I'm going to spend. Hi from Brazil. Hi, Augusto. Uh, that's all we're going to do for today. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to try to hang out with you guys a bunch more. Um, and send me your feedback. Let me know if there's anything that you want to hear. Uh, and uh, if you guys want to buy the hats, I'd love to give them all today. Uh, so hit me up on Instagram at Mark Burke. And that's it, guys. Have a great day. And I'm going to start firing up a podcast, I think. All right. Check you later. I don't know how to end. There it is.